Hi friends, welcome. My name is Baron, and this is my channel where I talk about book stuff. I'm the book Baron. Welcome in. So today I have space buns because I went to an Ash Nico concert and I saw a girl with space buns that had purple hair like me and I was like, I want to be a space bun girly too, but I, d I don't know if it's the life for me. I have a feeling that upon editing this video, I'm going to regret this choice. Actually, I think you're crushing it past me. You're doing a great job. This is your new identity. But that said, um, you have made questionable choices with your hair in the past. In high school, you did have a peekaboo. So like, you've made bad choices before. This could be one of them still. But for now, that's what we're working with. Well, what are we doing today? Today, we're doing my November TBR. So I'm going to give you a heads up. I'm already a mood reader, so I have a hard time sticking to TBRs, but I've gotten really bad lately because I am fighting so bad against a reading slump. I have read some very good books recently, which is part of what's kind of like tipping me in that direction. I'm also just dealing with a lot of exhaustion, partially because I've been just really busy, but also I think I might have a depressive episode coming on. I haven't had one in a while, so I'm like, fingers crossed it's not that. Can't wait to find out. That said, it means that I'm having to DNF things very quickly if they're not working for me because I just simply cannot force myself to read. So if I'm not enjoying something or it's not holding my attention, I am incapable of reading it. So these are the most eligible bachelors and bachelorettes for this upcoming month, but there is no guarantees that I'm going to get to any of this. I could make this video and decide I don't want to read any of these. Right now, what I'm feeling is I want something with a lot of emotional charge to it. That seems to be what gets me out of my head and into the book or a really engaging plot where I want to see what's coming next. I have to keep reading like a thriller where you're just like, turn the page, turn the page, turn the page. That's what I'm targeting right now. That said, I always am in the mood for dark romance. So please, if you decide to pick up any of these books, be a responsible reader, check Storygraph, check Goodreads if you have triggers that you need to be on the lookout for. With all that said, what are the books that I'm wanting to read this month? First up, I have a book that I picked up on Stuff Your Kindle Day, and that is Don't Leave Me by Eden Emery. This is on KU. It's part of a spicy club series, I believe. This is a new to me author. I don't know if this is considered dark romance or not. I'm assuming it is fits into that category. It's got forced proximity, it's stepsister, and it's sapphic. So it's for sure at least a taboo romance. The synopsis of this is super, super bad, but it is about about stepsisters Sloane and Lillian and it sounds like this is told in two timelines one when they are 17 years old and another when they're maybe in their 20s. It sounds like there's going to be some forced proximity because in the earlier timeline they're going to be living together and it sounds like the house that they live in is isolated and then as I said there might be a spicy club element or some organized crime pieces to it because I've heard that that is involved in some of the other books. That's that one. That's what I know about it going in. I'm interested in this one because it was recommended on Goodreads for people who are fans of The Madhouse by Liz James, which is one of my top books of the year. Like for sure in the top five, it might be top three. Oh, and for those of you that don't know, I actually got to interview Liza James over on Nikki and Bookland's channel. So I'll put a link to that video in the description box here if you haven't had a chance to see it. She is such a lovely human, which just makes my love of her books all the better, but I digress. So it was recommended for people who are fans of The Madhouse by Liza James. And then also two of my reading buddies. So Nikki in Bookland has read it. And then Cynthia from Kindle After Dark over on Instagram. They've both read it and absolutely loved it. So I was like, chances are because our tastes all tend to be pretty similar. There's a good chance I'm going to really like this book. So next up, I have 5,000 Nights of Obsession by Drethy Annis. This is on KU. This is a standalone, I think, and it's a dark Great Gatsby retelling. Great Gatsby already has like an obsessive element, so I think this is just going to take it to the next level. My understanding of this is that Axel is this like psychopath that kind of is living in plain sight, and he is infatuated with our gal. She is feeling his eyes on her everywhere, smelling his scent. Brosif here is definitely, is definitely stalking her. That's all I know about it, and honestly, that's all I want to know just because with retelling, I feel like a lot of times you know a lot going in, but I love The Great Gatsby. I love dark romance. It seems like a really good combo for me. Next up is one that I am kind of nervous about. R.I.P. by Charity B. This is on KU. It's a standalone. This is a 
horror thriller style romance. I have a feeling that this is like pitch black territory that we're talking about. We're not just talking about like he's in the mafia but he's really a nice guy. Like I think there's gonna be some like unaliving and, and also other gross things. Flowers in the attic style keeping it in the family if you know what I'm saying. I'll just leave it there. This is told in two parts from what I can tell in the synopsis and it sounds like it focuses on two characters Malachi and Adriel. From the synopsis it sounds like this family from the outside really appears to be this all-American Christian family but when you get kind of behind the scenes things get real wonky real quick. One of the characters is really questioning whether the things that are going on within their family is something directed by God or if it's something unnatural. There's also some indication that someone in the family has made a decision that has caused other family members a lot of pain. That causes them to go on a different direction and a different trajectory and there's references to blood. Can't emphasize enough, I think this one is going to be really, really, really dark. I'm interested in this because I read Anointed by Charity B and I was obsessed. Obsessed, obsessed. The angst and tension and the pain of the characters was so visceral for me when I was reading that book. I just, oh, and it is a top read of the year for me. The second I finished it, all I wanted to do was reread it. I was so in love with the book. I'm hoping that this can still capture some of that because we do have religious themes. I'm imagining the taboo nature of this relationship is going to come into play as well and create some angst and tension. But that said, I have heard diametrically opposed opinions about this. I don't really hear anybody that's down the middle. When I posted that I loved Anointed over on my Instagram, which I have linked in the description if you want to follow me over there, I had multiple people that message and say, oh my gosh, if you love Anointed, you have to read R.I.P. And then I also got multiple DMs from other people saying, oh my god, R.I.P. is so effed up and gross. Is this one like it? So <laughs> I'm like optimistically nervous going into this book. I'm hoping for the best, but if it goes like horribly wrong, like there was indicators. I'll put that all out there for you and, and, and we'll see where I come out on this one. Next up is The Maiden by Celia Aaron. So this is not on KU. I did also get this one as part of Stuff Your Kindle Day. It is part of a three book series that is following the same couple. The plot of this is that Delilah is a follower of the prophet. She is part of the cloister, which is a cult. The prophet's son, Adam, has been tasked with protecting her from the outside wolves is what the synopsis says. So it sounds like keeping her in line potentially and then also kind of protecting her from the sins of the outside world. But she's finding more and more that the outside world is kind of controlled by the prophet. She's also got some duplicitous motives here. She is seeking the truth, whatever that means. This could really spell disaster for her if anyone finds out. It sounds like from the synopsis that she's falling in love with Adam, but also with her duplicitous motives, this could really spell disaster for her getting involved with him. Why I'm interested in this book is because cults. If this is your first time watching a video of mine, I really love dark romance with cults in them. I, I don't I don't have any explanation other than I just find it really interesting. So I was interested because of that. Also, this book has consistently been pushed at me on Goodreads because it is supposed to be similar to some of my favorite authors, Aza Varelli, Nina G. Jones, and Lily White. This is like been the book that's kind of been haunting my Goodreads account and I need to just read it and it was part of the Stuff Your Kindle Day so I have the book. I really have no excuse not to have read it. Moving along next up we have Ecstasy by KV Rose. So this is on KU. It's a first in a series and I believe this also follows the same people throughout. This is a dark romance. It's supposed to be super toxic. It's got addiction and mental health and there's three people in the synopsis. So I don't know if this is love triangle, a menage, a why choose. I don't really know what the synopsis says is that there are three students that are attending a university. So first we have Zara. She is struggling with a substance abuse issue. Then we have Eli. He's like the star athlete at this school. And then there's Alex and it says he's just an a-hole. So I'm kind of getting the sense that maybe he's just kind of like the punk bad boy type. Maybe. Maybe that's presumptuous. It sounds like they meet at a party and their worlds collide and it's drama and drugs and turmoil and toxic. The reason I was interested in this is because it is one 
one of KV Rose's like more popular books from her backlist. And I just read The Monster of Hotel Number no. 7 and really enjoyed Haria, her female lead for that book. And so I'm just hoping for some like no fucks given type of energy and people just kind of like doing whatever they want. So I'm also in the mood to just like have my heart hurt a little bit. So I feel like this might be a good, a good combo for that. Next up, I have Twisted Obsession by S Mastery. So this is going to be on, or this is on KU. It's part of a series and this was just published last month. So this is age gap, dark romance, college, hockey, and amnesia. We have Melody Cameron. She wakes up in a hospital and girly pop is like, no thoughts, empty head, amnesia city for this girl, right? She ends up going to Denver to stay with a distant cousin, but this cousin knows like absolutely nothing about her. So she's like, this is not helping me gain my memories back. But you know who can help her? A hot young hockey player that is 10 years her junior who seems to be really obsessed with her and also have way, way, way too many details about her life. The reason that I'm interested in this is S Mastery's kind of been on my radar for a while. I've wanted to read one of her books because I've heard it's like dark, twisted, like obsessive hockey romances. And I was like, well, that sounds like a fun combo because I like hockey romances and I like dark romances. Let's marry those two up. What really got this one in particular on my radar is one amnesia. I love amnesia trope. I know it's not a popular one, but I, I really like it. It does leave this element of mystery to the book, which always propels me forward of like trying to figure out what's going on. But also I was able to get my hands on the prequel because I'm on S Mastery mailing list. And she was like, hey, here's a free prequel. And that hooked me. It was one of the best prequels I've ever read on getting me hooked into the series of being interested in the characters, setting them up. I was just like, all right, I'm in, I'm in. I, this is the one I'm going to read. So I know it's like the fourth in the series, but like I said, you can't tell me what to do. I read things in whatever order I feel like. <laughs> Next up, we have A Love Letter to Whiskey by Candy Steiner. So, ooh, it is getting so, so dark. This is on KU. It's a standalone from her. It's like right person, wrong time, high angst. I've heard that they like don't get together until like the last page. I'm going in for the most part pretty untainted despite being a big fan of Candy Steiner. Have never read this obviously. I also just haven't found out a ton about it and I kind of wanted to stay that way. All I know about this book is that it is highly emotional, lots of hurt fifis. I'm just like I'm ready to get into it. I haven't read it up till this point because I was just like not in the right headspace to be reading like a very emotional book. And now I am, I feel like I need to strike while the iron is hot because this has been sitting on my shelves for way, way, way too long. Next, we have a book that's been on my list for far, 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 far too long. And that's Shattered Hearts by Shay Ruby. I feel like I've brought this up in several videos recently because truly I have been meaning to read it since at least June, it may be April. Like it's just been going on too long. It's been one of those that just, I want to get to it so bad and I just keep not doing it. And if someone even on one of the other videos was like, do it, this is going to be a top read of the year. I'm so sorry, I still haven't done it. I'm hoping this will hold me accountable finally. This is on KU. It's the first in a series of three books and they all follow the same people. So this is dark romance. It's a toxic relationship. It features mental health issues and it sounds like Hallie is kind of on this self-destructive path. She's just kind of looking for anything to get her thrills, whether it's in the sheets or drugs or alcohol, whatever it is, she's just trying to do thing to get a high basically. And she ends up meeting Zane and this becomes her new drug of choice. This is her latest addiction. Zane is also spiraling out is the problem. So these two are just horrible for each other. But in Hallie's mind, these two can force their ragged edges together and really fix each other. The description literally says that they are so toxic that it becomes explosive. So if that doesn't pull you in, I don't know what will. I also saw this on Harley LaRue's Instagram advertising for this book. And so I'm like, I know if Harley LaRue is pushing this, that the rep usually is very good. And I'm imagining that the mental health issues are probably done pretty well. Like I said, I've been meaning to get to this for a long time, but I've got squirrel brain. So it just like, 
on to the next shiny thing. Finally, one that I am hesitant to put on here, but I'm gonna do it anyway, because I would read this if I wasn't filming videos of what I, I read. Take You Down by McKay Marie, better known as, oh hey, it's McKay here on YouTube. She is a booktuber that published just this past month. This is on KU. Currently it's a standalone, but I think it's planned as an interconnected series. It's supposed to be a rock star romance, forced proximity type of vibe. The premise here is that Walker and his band took like a year hiatus and they're just coming back for this big reunion tour, but things are kind of falling apart behind the scenes. They've lost some of that chemistry. They're fighting. It's tense. So Walker needs a distraction and he finds that in their opening act, Scarlet. For Scarlet's part, she has been battling with sobriety and alcoholism for a couple of years now. She's been sober for two years, but she's constantly feeling that pull towards the drink. And as she's having this rise to fame, she's also losing her privacy and really just struggling with what priority music plays in her life now and also how Walker fits into all of that because obviously he's very high profile. I wanted to read this just because I want to be supportive of anyone that's publishing but especially booktubers since I am now in this space. That said I am a little bit nervous about how it's perceived if I read it but I'm trying to not just like think about it. I'm like, okay, if I wasn't on booktube, I would totally have read this book already. So I'm just gonna go for it. That's all I have for you. That is the list of most eligible bachelors and bachelorettes for this month. Thank you so much for being here. Let me know in the comments what you're planning to read this month. And don't forget to like this video if you like it. Subscribe if you want more content from me. And I hope I see you in my next video. Bye-bye.